Okay, so, oh, no! Oh my gosh, maybe I shouldn't have opened it. No, 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 no! Hey Vivats, I'm back! And today I'm gonna be taking a look at some Series 1 micro toy boxes from Super Impulse that I was sent for free to check out. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm really excited because, believe it or not, I love miniatures! And so the moment I saw these were gonna be released, in fact, I saw them early at a toy event, I was so excited and couldn't wait to get my hands on them. And I didn't even care what size either because they come in 5 packs, 10 packs, 15 packs, and even 20 packs. But sadly, Canada got no packs, which makes today Today's video all that much more exciting for me. But worry not my friends, if you live in the States and love to collect miniature things, then these are available for you guys from around $6.99 to $8.99, according to the internet anyways, depending on where you shop. So I'm just gonna bring these a little closer and quickly take a look at the packaging before we open. So basically we've got a clear plastic tub here, unless it's printed, it's a little hard to tell. Over on the wider side it looks kind of like there's a paper insert. No big deal, we'll find out once we open it, and we can see the 50 different items that we can collect in this series, or at least I'm assuming. I don't really plan on counting them. And I'm gonna cross my fingers that at least one of mine is gonna be a magic eight ball because I have a plan for that. And all of the packages are the same, by the way, excluding what visible one we see on top. And unlike some of the bigger packages, which show off more of what we're getting inside, this one only reveals one of the five items. The rest of them are hidden. So there is a good chance we're gonna get duplicates, but hopefully not too many because I would love to be able to show off a bunch of the different things you can get inside. What am I doing? I don't know. Let's just start opening, okay? ASMR. Just kidding. Okay, so I'm gonna move these two off to the side so they're not distracting me. And we can get started with this one here. We're just gonna peel off the top plastic film. And first up, we've got a red shovel. No, we don't. We've got a red pail with a little yellow shovel. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. Does it come off? Hold on, can we remove the handle? I can. Let me take the shovel off. Wait, can I put it back on? Oh my gosh, there we go. Excellent. I wonder if I can actually use this to make a sand castle. It would work the same way, wouldn't it? Just put some wet sand in, pack it down and flop it out. I'm actually pretty excited to try that. <laughs> However, this is probably a good time to mention that Micro Toy Box is also the maker of the world's smallest objects, which are usually functioning. But these ones here are even smaller than world's smallest items. And unfortunately, the objects we get inside will not be functioning. Except, of course, a shovel and pail, because like I said, there's no reason that it shouldn't. Anyways, let's continue on. We've got ourselves a sticker. This is a Nerf Maverick. Looks like a yellow Nerf gun. And I can only assume that the stickers are of potential items we could get inside of a micro toy box. We've got a little plastic window here. Great for crafting. And underneath it we have one, two, three, and four blind bags, two checklists, and the remaining toy box. And it looks like I was right. There is a paper insert and the rest of the images were actually printed onto the plastic toy box, which according to these instructions we can stack and store our items in. We just need to kind of fold them backwards like so and then stick it back in like that, I guess. I mean, okay. I love the effort, but it doesn't look all that great to me. So personally, I'm just gonna remove the insert, place it in the back and move on to our blind bags, which kind of bummed me out since they are made of plastic when paper was definitely an option here. So they're purple, yellow, and blue. And on the back, they say that there are 50 to collect and each one actually has a barcode. So I guess technically these could be sold individually somewhere. I don't know. Regardless, it's time to open. So we've already got our shovel and pail, and now we've got, oh, it's Pictionary. Okay, we've got a purplish burgundy box. And because these aren't functioning like the classic world's smallest items, this is just plastic wrapped in a printed sticker. It's not gonna open or anything. You know what, before we continue on, I'm gonna open the checklist if my fingers cooperate and see what we have the opportunity to collect as well as start checking off which items we're getting. <gasps> oh my gosh, I want a chatter phone. Oh, no, I want Barbies. Oh my gosh, I want the My Little Ponies. Ah! Just chill out, Jen, okay? You you look like a fool right now. All right, let's just start checking things off. Here's the Pictionary and the bucket. All right, so it looks like the majority of these items either have blue or yellow boxes, which I assume would be pretty common to come by, but we've also got some silver boxes, which are rare items, and scarce ones, which are gold. And of course, the eight ball that I want happens to be a scarce item. Why wouldn't it? Yeah, that tracks. Somehow I just always 
always know what to hope for and it's like the rarest, you know? But you know what? We might surprise ourselves. So let's continue on to the second blind bag. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's a pony. Oh, I tipped her down. Come, come on, come on. Just don't mind me. There we go. We've got a My Little Pony box and butterscotch is inside, guys. I'm just gonna snip the tape here and open it because I mean, there's not gonna be very many things we have the opportunity to do this with. So I'm just going for it. Slide out the plastic. Look at the back. Can we see that? It's a little blurry. It says collect them all. There's even a little barcode there. How cute. And oh, look how sweet she is. She's a pastel orange color with orange mane and tail and matching cutie marks, which are butterflies on either side, as well as tiny little black eyes. Wait a minute. Oh my gosh. Hold on, I gotta zoom out. I bought myself the full My Little Pony collection at Christmas. I actually found them at Toys R Us, but I haven't opened them yet. And unfortunately, I still don't plan on opening them just because they are super cute. But look, we've got two little butterscotches here. This is the difference in size. And of course, world's smallest brand actually works. So they have real hair and come with a comb, whereas our micro toy box ones are just solid and meant to be display items. So I'm just gonna put it back in the box and seal it up. Ta-da! Let's check off our pony right here in the center, Butterscotch. Ooh, man, I really hope to get one of the other two ponies because I have them in world's smallest form too. But we're gonna have to wait to see what we come up with. Let me just clean these up and we will proceed with our fingers crossed. Figuratively, of course, because this is kind of difficult. <laughs> So in blind bag number three, we have Skeletor from He-Man and he comes in a little blister pack, but check it out. I'm actually able to slide the packaging right apart from the cardboard backing. Hey, you know what? I think they lied when they said that these are not working little miniatures because why even bother putting in his staff? I mean, that's pretty cool. So there's a little purple staff inside this little plastic bag and here's our little Skeletor figure. So he comes standing on a clear base and he's wearing blue in purple. His face is green and he's got red eyes. And I'm quite surprised at how well he's painted. I mean, it's not perfect, but I kind of expected way worse from something so small. So I'm just going to pop him back in there and then I'm going to add his staff. You know what? Maybe we should take it out first, even though I don't think it's going to show very well. So it's long and purple. And on top, we have a matching colored skull. This is really tiny, so I didn't expect it to be painted. But on the little cardboard insert here, you can see what color it's meant to be, which is more skull color. So maybe one day if I get a really good microscope and some patience, I might attempt to paint that. But for now, I'm just going to put it back in the bag and slip it in behind Skeletor so we don't lose it. And then pop the insert back inside the plastic like so and take a look at the back of the package, which looks very real. It says Masters of the Universe, Action Figures, Modern Play, Retro Power. Then it says Collect Them All so we can get He-Man and Skeletor. Then down here in the corner, we've got a barcode and a crazy small Super Impulse logo. And that's it for Skeletor. So let's add him to our toy box. Now we'll move on to the final blind bag in this first box here. Ready? What's it gonna be? It doesn't feel like an eight ball because it's not. We have a blue and orange gun, probably a Nerf gun because it's Nerf or nothing, right? Hold on, let's see. Yep, it's a Delta Trooper Nerf gun. Uh, Not the best item, but still a cool miniature, I guess. Let me just check that off. Oh, I also forgot to check off our Skeletor. Tour. So let me just get that. Hey, he was a rare. So let's just pop that in there. And that's it for our first toy box, which means we can move on to the next. But before I do, I just want to say, even though I love this so far, all of this plastic here is so unnecessary. Come on. The top one might be necessary, but everything inside could easily be wrapped in tissue paper. Any who's in Susan, time to open. Yeah, I just said that. <laughs> And first up, we have Candyland, the board game. This is actually, oh, dropping it. This is my brother's favorite game. So if I get a duplicate, I am definitely gonna make him a keychain out of it. I mean, of course I'd have to seal it so the sticker doesn't peel off, but that's totally doable. So let's just quickly check that off the checklist and move on to our sticker, which is a duplicate. So it's another Nerf Maverick gun. And then we have our plastic insert, which is recyclable. That's the only reason I haven't complained about it. And then we've got our four blind bags. So let's just pop those out. Boop, 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 boop. And I'm going to take these out because I want to try the stacking feature. Wait, first we got to put our candy land in. There we go. This is from our second box. So here we go. Three, two, one. Uh, that's not all that impressive. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, it's not horrible, <laughs> but it's not all that great. Everything is just kind of smooshed down there. Nothing is really being displayed. Still love the idea of reusing these little boxes, but I mean, so far, it's mostly just because the idea is good. Let's face it. You can't really see the items through the box for the display that they're mentioning. And when they're stacked, everything's kind of just squished at the bottom. But regardless, they are useful as toy boxes. And so they make sense. And now on to our blind bags, starting with this one here. I'm gonna make an educated guess based on feel that this is a teddy bear. And I was right. It's a brown teddy bear with black details, a white muzzle, and a super cute little red bow tie. And he seems like a pretty common one to get according to the checklist. Let's just add him to our toy box. Boop. And we'll move on to the second bag. Oh, that one opened really easily. I lied. I have to open it like chips now. Oh, I super lied. Hold on. We've got another family game. This one is Tip It. It says, oh, that's a typo. <laughs> it says, take the discs, but don't the tower. I think it's supposed to be don't topple the tower. Wait, what does this one say? Hold on. Oh, it's so hard to see. It says, take the disc, but don't topple the tower. Yep. Okay, so the front has a typo. But other than that, it looks really good. Once again, it's plastic with a colorful sticker wrapped around it. And into the box it goes. Oh, I missed it. That was uncool. All right. Okay, so I found our game on the checklist, and funny enough, once again, it says take the discs, but don't the tower. So that is a flaw on every package. I love it. On to bag number three, and oh no, I think we got our first duplicate. It feels like a shovel and pail. It is, but oh, it's a different color. Wait, what? Where's our other one? So here's our first one, very McDonald's colored, you know, red and yellow. And here's our second one. So this time the pail is purple with a green shovel. Is that a thing? Hold on, let's check our professional answer sheet also known as a checklist, if you will. They only show the red one. I'm so confused. It doesn't say there's options for different colors. So does everything have the opportunity to have a variant? Please stand by while I refer to the internet. All that I see is that color styles and varieties may vary. So I suppose that's our answer. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. Wait a second. Is G.I. Joe an option here? Because how great would that be, right? <laughs> but sadly, no, I, I don't see one. Either way, love the fact that we have a color variant. That's cool. It's technically different. Shake, 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 shake. I mean, I don't know how I'm gonna check it off my checklist, except maybe to put times two. Yeah, that works, cool. And now onto the last bag for the second box. And it feels like a blister pack in there. So maybe we'll get He-Man or I guess there's other things too. Oh my gosh, what a random thing I was gonna say. Technically there's also Power Rangers and Transformers. And oh my gosh, I was wrong. There is a G.I. Joe. That's awesome. Where were my eyes a second ago? But no, nope, we got He-Man. He is a master of the universe. And so we should check him off like the master he is. Funny enough, he's common and Skeletor is rare. Wouldn't it have been cool if they were both rare? Like, wow, Jen, you've got so much luck. But no. It's just Skeletor. Speaking of which, let's get him out since they are now a complete set. So there you go. Good guy and bad guy, friend and foe, you know? So his packaging is the exact same on the back, but if we slide out his cardboard insert, we can see a picture of He-Man there instead of Skeletor. And here he is, so tiny. Oh my goodness. And once again, I'm startled at how well he's painted. Like I didn't anticipate that it would be super horrible, but I also didn't think it would be so well done, you know? So he's got brown boots with orange orange around the top there, his brown loincloth, silver not so armor armor across his chest, blonde hair and pinprick eyes. He's got bulging muscles and everything too. It's crazy. And once again, we've got some super teeny weapons in this bag. So we've got his sword and his shield. It's like a grayish blue color with four red sections around the center. It's kind of blocked by my nail. And then we've got a silver sword. Can we make him hold it? Skeletor didn't really have a hole in his hand that I saw for his staff, but but this sword here actually does have a little spot to slide his hand into and yes, he can hold it. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. See why I love miniatures so much? Sometimes they just surprise you, you know? And you probably can't see it very well, but there's like a little clip like section on the back of the shield. So I wonder if I can kind of pop that onto his hand. Oh, so close. Oh my goodness. What? That is insane. And I'm not hurt if you see this on my hands. The blind bags are staining my fingers when I open them, but check it out. Wait, can he stand though? Don't fail us. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Hold on. Guys, he's standing. He is officially standing. Let's get Skeletor out. We're doing it. We're doing it. He kind of does have a little fist opening there. You know what? I'm going to attempt to give him the staff. I didn't really give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, I just kind of cast them away as not functioning. <gasps> oh my gosh, I was wrong 
wrong about him too. I've never been so excited to be so wrong in my life. Wait, you can't even see him. Hold on. Let's zoom in. Ah, check it out. They're so teeny. All right, guys, I pushed my luck. <laughs> I stopped filming so I could take pictures and then Skeletor dropped his staff and He-Man lost his shield. So we're done with that. But that was so exciting for me. Like, I don't know why, but it just was. So I'm just going to put the tiny bits back in the bags. That way I don't lose them. And then reassemble the blister packs. I can't believe these guys can actually hold the items. I mean, that's pretty cool. Now I'm just going to reassemble my Skeletor package and add them back to his toy box. And that's it for the first two toy boxes. But I'm not going to keep them stacked because it doesn't look that great. Which means it's time for our third and final box that has a... Ooh! Oh! Good catch, Jen. Inside, we've got a blue yo-yo with a white string in the center. And this is most definitely very well attached, so it's not going to work for us. But as you can see, it is very special. There's a gold logo in the front, making sure we know that. It's Duncan's Imperial, the world's first original yo-yo. Or at least according to that logo, anyways. So let's find it and check it off. Oh, right there. Oh, it's a rare. Maybe that's why it was gold. Da -da -da -da. So let's just place that over there for a sec. And for our sticker, is it going to be a triplicate? No, we finally got a different one. It's a light bright. So that's it for stickers today. Underneath our plastic, which I will add to my pile, we've got our four remaining blind bags. So let's just take those out, remove the inserts and checklist. And then we can start adding our toys. So in goes the yo-yo and it will be followed by whatever's in this bag here, <gasps> which is a totally hair Barbie. Oh my gosh, you know I'm opening this. Where are my scissors? Who gets so excited for a tiny Barbie? Like really contain yourself, Jen. Okay, so <gasps> no, 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 no. Ah. okay, don't you worry, folks. I will fix that, okay? Oh my goodness, just my luck. These are very delicate. We interrupt this broadcast to perform some Barbie box surgery. Oh my gosh, because I'm a numpty. I got too excited and broke things. That sounds like me. To be honest, I want this to last a long time anyway, so it's probably a good thing. So I'm just going to reinforce everything with tape, including the flaps, and then trim away the excess so that they still work. And for the window section of tape here, I'm going to cut a small hole in the middle, add four slits in the corners, and then fold the remaining tape inside. Like I said, I want to reinforce this so that mistakes, like me ripping the box, don't happen again, you know? And there we go. My Barbie box is fixed. So let's stick everything back together like it never even happened. Perfect plan, right? I know. Ta-da! So the box is all pink. We can see our doll in the front window. It says Totally Hair Barbie down there, as well as on both sides. And on the back, even though it's shiny now from tape, we can see Barbie and Teresa there. And now it's time to open her up. And here's our Totally Hair Barbie. Oh, oh my gosh, she's going flying. <laughs> so she comes wearing this painted pink dress with long sleeves, which matches her shoes. Her features are super tiny to see, but she's got some eyebrows and eyes there. That's pretty much it. No mouth or anything. And of course, she's got floor length blonde crimped hair, which I'm surprised is separate from her body. I thought it would just be one molded piece like some of the old McDonald's dolls, but no. And she is standing on a little black base. But unfortunately, that does not make her balance when we try to stand her up. Time for an experiment. I wonder if she can fit in a poly spot. Oh no, she can't. Her base is too big. I bet if we shaved it down, she could. But I mean, yeah, I don't really want to do that. It was worth a shot though, right? So let's just put her away before I do any more damage to this poor doll. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, she's so cute though. I love her. I was just so excited, you know? It wasn't intentional. Throwing her in the box though, kind of, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, so let's just check off our Barbie. Apparently she's one of two that we can get. So she's the 1992 totally hair Barbie, but we can also get a 1971 Malibu Barbie, which it doesn't feel like I have here. <laughs> but we do have three other things, so let's just continue anyways. It's not like it's going to stop us. So this second bag here has a duplicate. No, it's butterscotch. I mean, great. Oh, dropping it. Super cute, but I'm going to leave this one in the box because maybe I can trade somebody for it. Although I'm in Canada and apparently we didn't get these here, so my hopes are not high, but still I'll keep it in the box anyways. And then there were two, dun dun dun. So this one has a red canister of Tinker Toy pieces. Oh, I remember these. They were colorful plastic rods that came with little wooden wheels that had little holes on the sides and you would stick all the rods in to create random structures and things. So we'll add that to the box and then check it off our list here beside the Lincoln Logs. And finally, we'll move on to our last blind bag. 
which does not feel like a Barbie or a Magic 8-Ball, just saying. Ah, but it is a glow worm, so that's exciting. Okay, so it's all green with a little caterpillar-like face and blue eyes and a nightcap. Aw, I didn't even notice him on the checklist. And even now, I still don't see him, so maybe I'm not crazy. I don't think this checklist shows everything you can get, guys. How many other things are out there? I don't know, but I can't check him off. All right, cool. Okay guys, that's it for me and my first look at the micro toy boxes that I was sent. I really like them. I like the toy box aspect. I like the items that came inside and I like the fact that even though I had so many opportunities to get duplicates, I only got one, which of course is Butterscotch the My Little Pony. Actually, I guess I got a duplicate sticker if you wanna count that, but I really don't. <laughs> Overall, I really like everything about these except the blind bags. I think if they were to switch that to paper, then this product would be so easy for me to just fall in love with, especially since I can open things. Like I thought these were gonna just be miniatures that you can't use, but the box is open guys. And those blister packs, like I, what? They had extras in there. That wasn't necessary. And the fact that they could hold them. I am so glad I decided to test that out because it was a very exciting moment for me. And that little glow worm that's not even on the checklist, all of these things just have me wanting more of these boxes so I can see what other kind of secret things there are or variations. But alas, once again, Canada was forgotten by the toy companies. They were all like, no, they don't like miniatures. So I'm really happy that these were sent to me so I could get the opportunity to check them out, especially since it's probably gonna be the only time I do. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did and haven't yet, then please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future fun toy reviews. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.